What's up, everybody? Coach Ben Wade, the Dragon Slayer. Welcome to Epic Bourbon Tastings. This is our second episode on the YouTube channel. Let me tell you here, it is uncut, unfiltered, unedited, one shot. That's what we get. We're going to be tasting the finest rye whiskeys. A little bit of a change tonight, throwing a curveball. I said last week that we were going to do uh, an all whistle pig tasting. Here it is. Got some of my favorite whistle pig picks. But before we get into that, please welcome to this seat right here, my co-host this week, the one and only king of cool, king of swag, the guy whose man bun rivals my own. This is my man, Derek Noah. Have a seat there. Thanks, Ben. All right, so we are going to be tasting some of these amazing ryes. Derek, have you ever had a rye? Have you ever had a rye whiskey? I can't say rye bourbon. That'd be a misnomer. Not of this caliber. So I am very excited. Awesome. So we got the whistle pig tin right here, but this is not just the whistle pig tin. I've had the whistle pig tin. Not a big fan of it. This is the single barrel, and also the barrel select by, of course, my good friends at uh, Keg and Bottle. This is what we got right here. It is the Whistle Pig 10. And actually, without further ado, man, we're going to jump right into it. A lot of people ask me, uh, what is the difference between a rye and a bourbon? I'm going to tell you after I, I give us this generous little pour right here. This is a very smooth tenure, I'll tell you. So, rye whiskey is 51% rye, where bourbon, it's almost the entire mash bill is made up of corn. So what you get with the rye, it's a little bit less sweet, although these are actually very sweet. A lot of times if you taste these and I slipped them into a blind bourbon tasting, you might not think that they're rye. Mm. We get spice, we get smoke, sometimes we get heat with the ryes, but not so with these friends. Actually, this right here, I can't say that for this because this is an old world rye. I've never tasted this. I'm opening up this bottle tonight. First of all, cheers to you, my friends. I've known Derek not since he was in diapers, but man, for a friggin' long time. He played saxophone in the youth orchestra. That's how I first met him. And uh, he had long hair at a long very young age. Long. Very young age. The ladies loved it, I believe, if I remember the stories correctly. Oh, they but never let me know that. <laughs> Oh, it's like fruity on the nose. A little spice, not a lot of smoke, mm. and, a, and a smooth finish that kind of rides off, like we said last week, into the, into the sunset. It's actually, it, the, the, the burn progressively decreases quickly, but it's almost the same level as it decreases. Yeah, it, the intensity is still there. Mellow, mellow, but you still got that burn. Like, yep, yeah, you do. But it's not a burn that is un unpleasant. Some burns, it's like the IPA beers, can't stand them. Oh, yeah. I don't like the hoppiness. No, can't even open a bottle around No, I yeah, <laughs> can't stand it. But with this here, it's not a burn that's unpleasant. Not like the Prometheus back there by Iron Root Harbinger, which is uh, gives you some serious burn. You got actually, it's one of the few bourbons that I put ice in. It's very easy on the nose. I feel like it's a very warm, rich flavor that kind of is like butterscotch. Mm. Maybe a little bit of toffee on the front end. It comes in like this, not powerful. Comes in like this, and then, like we said, kind of <clears throat> kind of decreases uh, on the palate. Yeah. But lingers, you know, still yeah, there. It is still there. Remember, we talked about last week. There's that if you're a bourbon aficionado, a rye aficionado, or if this is one of your first times. You can grab one of these bottles. Good luck on this end. Uh, but you can grab one of these bottles. Actually, look, here's my man, Ryan. This is part of the Three Little Pig series, but we won't get into that. Um, but we, we try to educate as well as have fun. Uh, you can have it neat, which is what we're having now. You can have it with a, a teaspoon of water. I've got my water here and a little measuring. And, of course, you have uh, rocks, which rocks are... Not my cup of tea. I usually don't do it. But I do like to drink things neat to begin with. And then we put a little bit of water in it to try to open up the flavors. Maybe decrease the burn just a little bit, but not enough so that we're drinking something that's weak. Bourbon on the rocks, we saved that for Old Crow, right? $29 for the plastic gallon. Mm -hmm. Not in the dragon's lair. Pun intended. Maybe a little bit too much water. But... See? And it was only a couple of drops. Such a good point. As we get into these, I'm going to tell you a story. 
about these two uh, bourbons that I have with my good friend Rick up in uh, McCall, Idaho at the Shore Lodge. Best bourbon collection uh, anywhere west of the Mississippi, with the exception of my man cave. But uh, we'll get into that. Yeah, I put. I just put not even a teaspoon. No, barely any. But it ruined that uh, that that opening palate. Sometimes it works wonders. We're like, wow, it's amazing. I can taste all these new flavors now. It's almost become uh, one dimensional. Yeah. Yeah. Cut it. Yeah, I think it just took out too much of the the flavors. It did. It did. So remember, we can always discard the bourbon unless it's uh, some of the boss hogs. But between the rounds, we'll give the glass a little rinse. You want to dump that in here? Sorry about that kegging bottle. I appreciate you guys. Uh, Sending me this bottle that I purchased. By the way, none of this, none of this, brother, is uh, sponsored. I like it that way. We're going to keep it that way. I don't need bottles to be sent to me because then it sways the judging. Oh, yeah. I was thinking about that. You know, if, and I I don't watch too many liquor tastings. <laughs> is that a With the exception of mine. Well, yeah. Yours for sure. Okay. I was all over that. Good. I mean, here I am. <laughs> <laughs> Second week co-host, baby. Um, uh, but... I forgot where I was going. Well, I mean, basically, you you were wondering about if I got sponsored bottles. Oh yes. <clears throat> See, the coach yeah. is mine. Man. I mean, even who, even, who even in lucidity, want, who would want to, right to send? <laughs> yes. Who would want to send? You know, somebody who's going to review their bottle, uh, an expensive bottle of bourbon or rye, and then have them you know, talk smack about it, even if it's bad. No, that's true. But a lot of these bourbon tastings, they have it all sent for free, and then, like you said, they're not really going to talk smack about it. I saw a bourbon tasting the other day. I had to, I won't mention names. I had to get on there and throw some comments around. And then they were saying, who, who is this guy? What, <laughs> bring some knowledge to the table. Okay. I poured a very healthy one that first time. And so we're going to have like have a 40 minute video if we don't slow the roll. We'll always do this. Maybe get a little bit on your hand there. We don't want anything in here. We want to cleanse the palate in between the drinks. Again, this right here is the Whistle Pig Old World Rye. Again, bottled especially for... Uh, breaking bourbon and keg and bottle, and this is the 12 year old old world rye. We'll set it right there. And you did just open it, the wrapper is sitting right so over that's there. Exactly right. Open for this for this episode. Ooh, <laughs> <laughs> twinsies! Oh my word, dude, it smells just delicious. So, I smell, I said a little bit on this one, this smells butter. Toffee. Actually, this smells like the seeds candy when you get the either the cashew brittle or the uh, toffeeettes. Mm -hmm. You know, with like the chopped up almonds on the outside. Yeah, just like opening up some kind of candy bar. Mm, and, a, and a hint of vanilla, which I always love vanilla in, in my uh, rice or my bourbons. Very smooth. Wow. Oh, but look at that. But look at that. We see, that's really interesting. I thought it would be more complex. I'm the kind of guy. Remember LL Cool J? I'm the kind of guy. <laughs> Do you remember that song? I'm the kind of guy. By the way, LL Cool J, a little shout out to LL Cool J. Last time I hung out with him, uh, we were down in LA knocking back a few. I believe he liked uh, Johnny Walker. But I digress. Anyway, LL Cool J, I'm the type of guy that likes a complex bourbon. Um, and this is very interesting because it's a lot more mellow than I thought it would be. I thought it was going to be complex and robust, but it's very much a very soft, gentle, almost like a first date. When my son asked me the other day, he's 12 years old, and he says, Dad, what about doing this in the movie theater? Should I do this? And Jan, I said, cut that crap, man. Literally, I said, cut that crap. You don't want that. You want to have, watch this. Just it's so gentle. It's easy, right? Oh, in the movie theater, I said, just go like this. Just gentle on the hand. We've all been there. Guys, young guys, if you're watching this, we've all been there. Should I do the yawn? Exactly. Thing, you know? Don't do it. Don't <laughs> do it. But it was almost like that first date approach. Softly to the hand. It's not big and robust and complex. It's very. It's actually very simple if I would say that. But what I like about it. The smell was just. Oh, the smell is unbelievable. In fact, when I drink this, I'm going to make sure I get a bigger smell. Maybe that will enhance the complexity. But what I really like is on the tail end of it, it goes like this. It's like riding that last wave at San Onofre, if you've ever been there, south of San Clemente, on a longboard, big nine-footer that I used to do back in the 90s. And it's like you think the wave is over with, and then it's a little 
little push at the end. You taste it again. Let's, yeah. let's smell it a little bit as we're drinking it, a little bit more. Hmm? Some color. Right there. Mm -hmm. That little yeah, wave, it man. It's really cool yeah, because it's a simple taste, but yeah. uh, you know, a little bit of burn comes on. Um, but not much. Yeah, very, not very much. little. Very little. Wow, that was really good. That's interesting. It reminds me a little bit. I think I mentioned it last time, uh, last week. It reminds me a little bit of the 14 year, no, 14 voyage, voyage 14 of Jefferson's Ocean, where they take these barrels and they put them on these uh, voyage ships and they go all around the world. Well, voyage 14 went through two hurricanes, a couple of tropical storms, and it's the most complex burn I've ever had. I can't find it. In fact, if anybody out there, I will play, I will pay triple the price of what you paid for it for a bottle of 14 Ocean's Voyage because it comes like this. Only bourbon I've had that goes like this. Wave, wave, equal amounts. It's, it's absolutely, in fact, I gotta show you this bottle. Everybody knows the Oceans because it's getting popular, but it's this one right here, Oceans 14. I used to have the ship logs from it, but like a complete bonehead, I didn't know what I had when I bought it. I bought it for, for uh, $99, and boy, I tell you what, I will drink all of my pappies. There's pappies in here that you haven't seen. I will drink all my pappies. I will drink all my Jefferson's Presidential Reserve 17-year-old before I drink the rest of this bottle because it's unbelievable. But let's, let's move on. Okay, so did you wash yours out? Not yet. No, I haven't washed it out. Let's do this really quick. I noticed that you didn't want to get rid of any of that one. Okay. Now we're going to get into the big boys, okay? I mentioned 10-year, not the, the private select or the, or the single barrel. I tried the 10-year on the top shelf a long time ago at Nacoma Resort in the Los Sierras. And I had that and I thought, overrated. Hmm. So I didn't try any until I was in uh, at the Shore Lodge in McCall, Idaho about a year ago, and I was in there tasting bourbons for my birthday, okay, 50th birthday. I'm tasting these bourbons, and the guy says, well, you gotta try the whistle pig. It's the best thing that we have here, Samurai Scientist. That's the, that's the six, they release one every year, age 17 years, okay? And so he said, you gotta have it, $100 for, the, for you know, an ounce. So I tried it, and I thought, this is outstanding. What else you got? He says, well, we just have the seven, it's just re released, it's the Magellan's Atlantic. And when I tasted that, I'm going to tell you right now, it's going to change your life. You're going to put your life savings on these Boss Hogs. Boss Hog is the top, the pinnacle of the Whistle Pig line. It's age 17 years, a fantastic story. Thank you. I liked it. I actually hit my hand. Uh, a fantastic story on this one. Okay. Whistle Pig 17. The, the time that they put into this bottle is absolutely unbelievable. Now, it says Magellan's Atlantic. When you pop this, this has got to be a good... I'm not kidding. This is a good two pounds. I'm going to let you um, hold it. But look, it's a Spanish conquistador on there. Okay. Magellan from Spain sailed around the world. Very famous explorer. I wish I was born in his time. Feel the heft of that. Oh, you're not kidding. It's amazing. If you look on the bottle, you can see very faintly in the back. Check this out, Derek. That is Magellan's journal. And among other things, it says the sea is stormy terrible and it talks about those intrepid spirits dangerous is the word on my tongue uh, there you go <laughs> dangerous stormy and so he talks about those intrepid spirits that stay on the shore but those of us that have courage to do the impossible things we leave the shore and we take risks and anything in life look i'm not going to get into the dragon slayer mode of operandi here but i'm going to tell you the greater the risk the greater the reward nothing in this life worth achieving is done so without adversity. Push through that adversity till you find the true prize. So, uh, Magellan's Atlantic, I'm gonna tell you right now, my absolute favorite whiskey, rye, rye whiskey in the world, and probably my number two all time. I'm not gonna tell you my number one all time bourbon that I've ever tasted. I've tasted all of them, but I will tell you this. This is finished in Spanish oak and South American Teakwood. You will never ever have a bourbon that is this palette. Now, when I was in Idaho, I tasted it. I was like, this is unbelievable. And guess what? Put a teaspoon of water in it. $100 for the one ounce. Ruined. Mm. 
so pissed at myself. So guess what? So you were con comparing rice to bourbons there. You were saying you'll never taste a bourbon with this kind of palate. Or, or a rye. Anything. Yeah. So I ordered another. I ordered another when I was there because I ruined the first one. So I had to order another one. Okay. So anyway, I remember when I was in India. This is what it reminds me of. When you first smell it, you smell the teakwood. I remember living in India growing up for a year and we would go into these shops and all the beggars were ripping our clothes off because they just wanted one a penny from us. And uh, we'd go into these shops and they'd set us down and they'd say, you know, you want thumbs up? You want Limka? You want... Uh, Kingfisher, most thrilling chilled, that's the Indian beer. And uh, my dad was like, no, we're not drinking. I was young, 13 years old. But my father, the first time we went into one of these shops and there was a hand carved teak wood box. And he said, smell this. And I was like, it's wood. In my mind, I'm thinking, it's wood. And I smelled it and it was that. And it was just, it's unbelievable to smell it now and, and to try to connect the memories. Yeah, that's... Uh... I just had the smallest little taste on my tongue and my mouth is overwhelmed by the I just the complexity the uh, it's like it comes on with an attack and then slopes off and like you said that wave of, of flavor and sensation just yeah it, it just creeps right back up and I still taste everything in my mouth I had a drop on my tongue that is so great that that's a great description. You still taste the full palate on your tongue, even though it's been 15, 20 seconds. All the way back, all the way back my tongue. I'm, <clears throat> I've never had a robust sense of smell or taste. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and I was, I was kind of thinking about uh, my perception on, you know, on, on these kinds of things, on, on tastings. I'm a musician. Um, I like to think that I can hear a great many things in detail when I'm at the symphony and when I'm playing and things like that. And it's, it just brings me to this higher level. Um, and I, I know the care and the technique and the craftsmanship that are going into these shrinks um, are on equal part or more than any effort that I could put into playing or listening to music. Mm. And so now, uh, you know, I've, I just being able to experience these uh, these products that, that people are making with that much care and, mm. um, and uh, attention to detail. Um, yeah, true. It, it is awakening sensations on my tongue that I didn't know that I could have. So look at that. That's just, I mean, that's such a, a great description from a virgin of the Boss Hog lines. I taste sandalwood. I taste teak. I feel this. I feel the flavor going like this on my tongue. I mean, I'm sitting back on this one. In fact, I'm actually going to take off my jacket for this one because it's just so good. I gotta get the full effect on this. Um, but you actually feel that it's, it's dripping over your tongue. The flavors cascade over your tongue on both sides and then make their way to the back of your mouth. And then once it's gone with a beautiful finish that doesn't burn, but lingers greatly because we want to linger it greatly. I challenge you to go, to, to go find, you won't find this. If you find it, call me up, post on there. I'll buy it from you. I'll buy it from you for a thousand bucks, easy. Um, that's how much these bottles are running for and more than that, but there's nothing like it. No, I've never tasted anything like that before. You've got, you've got to exist in the moment. You got to say, forget about the tasting, forget about the camera. And I'm actually just sitting back, which I usually don't do during a tasting because I like to be in almost sitting in my bourbon's lap, but I just want to just soak in this moment. This is about great friends, right? This is about great friendship. This is about exploring new possibilities. Again, we go back to that first date. You're right now on a first date with Boss Hall, and you're basically exploring the boundaries. You're exploring the limitations. You're exploring the sensual and sexual side of the Boss Hall, and hopefully it's got you in its trance, and you're going to fall in love with it. Honestly, folks, <clears throat> didn't know that I could feel those kinds of things with my tongue. Love it. <laughs> Love it. It's crazy. Cinnamon, sandalwood, teak wood. There's a little bit of coppery.
Tahitian vanilla, not Madagascar vanilla or Mexican vanilla. I have all three that I cook with. It almost is a, and almost a little taste of tanned leather and, and a hint of a campfire that's been extinguished about six months ago. Boom. Sorry, I just made that one up. I made fun of people that gave those kind of analogies last time I did this. But it's just so freaking good. I can't help myself. Wow. And it, it can evoke such a strong memory. You know, the first time you smelled a teak wood box mm -hmm. yep. in yep. India. You know, um, I, I have known that the old factories are the... the the sense that is tied closest to memory for some reason, how our brain is wired or something. Um, so, but yeah, I mean, just what a, gosh, what a powerful, mm -hmm. powerful liquid. <laughs> and what a powerful moment. Now the angels have had enough as this continues to evaporate into the heavens. So we'll put this bottle on and now we'll get to our final one and then we'll rank the bottles. We'll make this one pretty quick because we know we don't want to bore you guys with 20 minute videos. This right here, the Whistle Pig 8. This is Lapu Lapu. This is their eighth release. Lapu Lapu. Uh, Lapu Lapu Lapu. Yeah, Lapu Lapu in the Pacific. It's finished in single island Philippine rum barrels. If you look at this, that's the bottle. Whistle Pig, 17 year old. This is the eight. They just released this this last year. I believe I had the first two bottles on the West Coast. If you take off the stopper, you see this is the Philippine famous war chief. Lapu Lapu. He's got his, looks like a Samoan war club, like I have up on the wall over here. And on the back is something that says Mabu He. It has a boat. Take a feel of that. It has a boat on the back. And it says Mabu He. That's a Tagalog for basically, you have one life, you, you better freaking live it. It's life live is what it's translated to. But it basically is like, you got one life. And you better freaking live it. Now, interestingly enough, that it's interesting that Whistlepig decided to put this one after the seven. Because Magellan sailed around the Atlantic. And he met his demise at the famous war chief Lapu Lapu. This is the man who killed Magellan. <laughs> Google it. Unlike my Chong Ron studies and the Kochi that I've learned from the Tibetan uh, monks. Which you cannot Google because it's passed down by word of mouth. But I digress. This here you can Google and see that that is correct. That the chief... Uh, was actually the one that brought Magellan to his demise. So it's interesting. Sailed around the Atlantic, made into the Philippines, and this is the man of captain. Mm. Getting a history lesson here, too. By the way, thank you very much for keeping me from ruining um, <laughs> yeah. that by, just, by mixing the two. Important, so. Okay, <laughs> so Philippine single barrel Philippine rum cask. You will taste it in there. It is definitely a little bit stronger than the seven. Rich in flavor, probably not quite as unique, but absolutely in its own right, one of the best um, rye whiskeys out there. Darker smell to it. Definitely, you can smell the rum. It reminds me of when I was in spring break on the Bahamas. We won't tell any stories from that trip when I was 19 years old. Suffice it to say, I paid $279 for the cruise, five nights in a hotel, and the cruise back. You can imagine what kind of place we were staying in, <laughs> but let me tell you, it was a pretty crunk week, if I can still say that. Ooh, crunk. Uh, it was amazing. Okay, so I can taste the rum. Oh, I remember. So my point was, I was on the, I was on the harbor looking at the yachts and looking at the nice hotels, thinking what it would be like to one day stay in these places, and I saw an advertisement for Pusser's Rum. I didn't even know what that was. It had a cat on it, Pusser's Rum, but I did go to the bar and order it. And when I smell this, it smells like that, or maybe like a Gosling's rum. Mm. Cinnamon, caramel, fruit, allspice, rum. And what it does, and I love, I've done this tasting before where I put these side by side. It's not as eclectic as this, but it's like this flavor comes at you and it embraces you. It brings you around like this, not too much, not too little. And then just like a baby, put you to sleep, <laughs> right? I mean, it's like the, the, the burn on it is literally non-existent. Yeah. yeah, a much more consolidated taste, um, but it does, it kind of 
kind of wraps. I appreciate your uh, your descriptions of it because as being someone that doesn't have it at, at, as an advanced a palette as others, um, it helps to kind of be walked through when I'm mm. when I'm tasting. Right. right. Um, so, but yeah, also the kind of imagery with it is like, oh mm. yeah, my tongue is definitely yeah. going. Through. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I, I also I smelled cherry on it, and like you said the senses of the nose a lot of times dictate once i smelled the cherry then i tasted it again tasted it again and i had definitely tasted the cherry on it but of course when you're going through a tasting if i say marshmallow immediately you're going to think marshmallow if i say this tastes like a baboon's uh, backside <laughs> hopefully you won't think about that okay so without any further ado i'm going to put these in my order you can change that order if you can't see the top shelf but I put the foolproof weller from last time that kind of took the cake. I put that on the top shelf. Suggestion by my man Derek yeah, that said that. Yeah. Here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to say that was the most disappointing. And this is so hard because I love them both. I'd say that's going to be that's going to be my order right there. Worst to best. Yep. Now this one, really, you didn't like that one. I, it was not because it was not complex enough for me, mm. right? Would you do this right here? I think you would probably do this. I would put first, second, third. No, that's my I like it. amateur. I love it. That's why we're <laughs> here. Indian. Cheers to that, my man. Guys, thanks for joining us. We'll see you next week as we release a true top shelf Van Winkle and more is going to be a tasting to remember. Tune in next time.